السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today, inshallah, uh, we will talk about a female companion of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Her name is Al-Khansa, radiyallahu anha. And a male companion, Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi, radiyallahu anha. So let's, inshallah, start with uh, Al-Khansa. Her, her name, her full name is Tumadir. Bint Amr ibn al Harith ibn Sharid. So, uh, on the night, on the eighth year of Hijra, uh, there was a lady, an honorable lady, who came to be with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She she was a beautiful lady. She, uh, her name was very well known. And she was the, uh, uh, a very eloquent lady. She was a poet. And she used to say a lot of poetry. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, liked her poetry, actually. Uh, Al Khansa is uh, the poet who laminated her brothers, and they were called Sakhar and Muawiyah when they passed away. And she was uh, very eloquent uh, in, in lamin uh, lamentation, uh, she enumerated all the good qualities, all the good characters of her brothers, uh, along with uh, mourning them. So uh, I'm gonna say two, uh, two lines of poetry. She said, when she was talking about her brother, Sakhar, uh, so she she was she was so fond of her brother, and when um, when uh, he died, of course at that time she was not a Muslim uh, at that time, and she she mourned him and she mourned mourned his brother uh, for years and years, and she used to cry a lot, and people, uh, used to, uh, empathize with her, and they, they, they didn't know how to comfort her, how to calm her. She loved her brothers. That was her life before Islam. There is nothing, uh, to prevent her from doing, from exaggerating the sadness over, over the, the dead people. So if we stop here for a second and think about it, when uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim, the son of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after putting him in the grave, he, 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 he teared. So they asked, they asked him, the companions asked Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is this? Why are you crying? He said, Indeed, the, the eyes tear and the, the heart mourns, the heart feels sadness, feels uh, uh, the, the, the loss. But we do it in a reasonable way. We do it in an acceptable way. And this, subhanAllah, this means that we, we all 
lose uh, loved ones. Everyone is gonna die. No one is living for it forever. But when we mourn our loved ones, we have to do it in an Islamic way. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, you can have uh, sorrow and sadness for three days. Mourning is for three days, except for the uh, widow. She, she stays for four months and 10 days uh, uh, in, in her adda. So this is this this way of uh, uh, exaggeration uh, for for the death of her in the, in the sadness for the death of her brothers was not accepted in Islam. We just have to remember that this is Allah's decree. Death is going to. Uh, strike everyone. Death is but a door. Someone opened that door and passed by before us. We are all going through that door. So what eases us at the time of uh, 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 at this hard time is that we are all going to meet when we pass this door. So this will make it a little soothing for the heart. Now, what happened to Al Khansa after she became a Muslim? So, Islam changed the life of Al Khansa. And there was um, a delegation of uh, Bani Sulaim who came to Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, she was with them. They, they uh, all uh, uh, converted to Islam. They uh, uh, gave the pledge to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And at that time, immediately, she erased all the, ignor uh, the, uh, the ignorance uh, uh, qualities that she has. So before Islam, before someone becomes a Muslim, this is the ignorance time for him. And when she became a Muslim, she changed completely. So what is this ignorance time? Is it just for people who are not Muslim and they became Muslim so that the time uh, before becoming a Muslim is called this? No. Each and every one of us has an ignorance time, an ignorance period. Someone might not be practicing. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him, guided his heart, and he became practicing. He's a Muslim, but that period is called the ignorance period. Loving dunya is from ignorance. When we, when we um, uh, love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we realize how this should not be in our life. As I mentioned earlier, we, we want dunya, we want to be rich, but we want the dunya to be in our pockets, not in our hearts. So, uh, she, uh, Al Khansa, used to come to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to attend the gatherings um, uh, in, the uh, in the Masjid. And uh, she used to listen to the uh, Quran that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite. And of course, when someone listens with his heart, it's different than someone listening with his ears. How? Sometimes same ayahs are recited in a, in a majlis. The majlis, people are gathering, just a few ayahs are recited. You look at the faces, you might find someone crying uh, out of khushu'a, uh, and someone might be just uh, looking right and left, uh, not affected at all. 
So when there is a gathering of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, try to be there with all your limbs, with your heart, with your eyes, with your uh, 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 ears, with, with everything. So this is what happened to al Khansa. She opened the doors of her heart to let the light of everything that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is saying get into her heart. So the first thing she did, she started to change the way that she was raising her four children, four boys. So she instilled in them the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She instilled in them the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She instilled in them the love of fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of sacrificing themselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So al Khansa radiallahu anha was a very good uh, Muslim companion. She uh, witnessed conquering so many uh, countries. And during the time of uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu an, the uh, Qadisiya battle took place. So uh, Sayyidina Umar uh, um, sent the army to free Iraq and to uh, spread Islam there. And the battle that happened was uh, was called Al Qadisiya. So she was uh, talking to her four children, four, four uh, young men, and she was reminding them of how uh, great it is to have to be a martyr uh, for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And she she reminded them that. Victory is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it will be either victory or to become a, a martyr. So she said, Ya baniya innakum aslamtum ta'i'een wa hajartum mukhtareen. So you became Muslims by your free will and you migrated with your own choice. So just remember just remember that the eternal life is way much better than the vanishing life. So she is emphasizing to her children that the akhirah, the day after, the life after is much better than this dunya. They are not comparable. And in this, Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu anhu said, I'mal li dunyaka ka'annaka ta'ishu abada. Wa'mal li akhiratika ka'annaka tamutu gada. So live for your dunya and work for this dunya, then you think that you will be living forever. And live for the akhira, work, do your best for the akhira, it's as if you are dying tomorrow. How do we understand this? So for the first part, if you are living just for this dunya, then uh, uh, the human, human being would, would think, would plan, would do things, would uh, think of what will happen after 10 years, what will happen to my children. So the, the, the human being will think for this dunya as if he is living for for. for uh, for a long time, forgetting that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, The one who is living in this dunya is like the one who is traveling. He got tired, so he stayed uh, and sheltered, had some uh, shelter under, under a tree had the shade of the tree just for a, for a few minutes. So this is our life, the few minutes that we, that uh, this person had uh, the rest. This is life. 
but the akhirah is eternal. While when someone thinks of the akhirah, he will remember hadith Rasulullah when he said, Salli salataka ka'annaka muwadda'ah. Pray your prayer, perform your prayer as if it is the last prayer that you are going to pray, as if that you are dying immediately after. So living for dunya or living for akhirah? There is no comparison. This is what al Khansa raised her children to. So she said, she said her words and uh, she advised them and uh, she gave them uh, uh, her, her uh, words of wisdom. And she said, tomorrow, if you wake up, you will go to the battle. And you should remember that if you die, you will be in the high heavens with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is what we are seeking, to be reunited with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So her, her children uh, woke up the next day. They, they were so courageous. They wanted to go and fight for uh, the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And during the battle, all four of her children passed away. They became murderers. Now, compare her reaction to the death of her, uh, of her uh, children to the reaction of, her, of the death of her brothers. So when, when her children passed away, when her children were killed in the, in the battle, she said, Alhamdulillah, الذي شرفني باستشهادهم. Alhamdulillah, she thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he had honored her with four murders. وأرجو من ربي أن يجمعني بهم في مستقر رحمته. And I am begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would reunite me with them uh, with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she did not do what she did with her, uh, uh, with her brothers. You see how Islam changes the personality. So when we practice, when we practice Islam as it is, as uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam practiced it, then we are guided. Then we are protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we have any, anything to strike us, when we have any calamities, when we have any hardship. Be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of ease. He will be with you at the time of hardship. So... When we understand the reality of things, we act differently. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always to guide us, always to help us, always to be with us. And when we depend on him, we know that we will be saved in this dunya and in the day after, inshallah. So this was the story of al khansa Now we move to Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi. Al-Farisi is the Persian. So Salman, the Persian. The story of Sayyidina Salman is amazing. He's an amazing person. Subhanallah. Salman radiallahu anhu had an interesting life. His father was very rich. So he, he was uh, a person uh, who lived in Asfahan and he was uh, the governor, the chief of the 
city of the of the village that he lived in. So uh, Salman says, I was loved the most of people to the heart of my father of my father. He was so loving, he was so caring to the degree that he put me, he restricted me of going out of the house because he is afraid that something might happen to me. So they were worshippers of fire and because of his extreme love to his son, he made Salman Qatnun Nar. And the word Qatnun Nar means the servant of fire. So he would lit the fire. He would not uh, 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 he would not let the fire go down. He would always ignite it. He would always add the, uh, the wood. He would he is the one who takes care of the fire. And this is a very important uh, uh, position for the people who worship fire. So his father, as I mentioned, was very rich and he, he, he owned a village. One day he said, I wanna go out. So the father accepted and he, Salman was walking and he passed by a church. So he, he, when he passed by a church, he heard some noises inside uh, the voices of the people who were praying. So he said to himself, I don't, I have never liked worshiping fire. I have never liked this. Uh, 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 I have never accepted this. I feel there is something wrong in this. He feels that the faith of his father is, and the people around him is corrupt. So he hated it from deep inside. So when he heard the people praying in the church, he said, I think my father uh, uh, put me inside the house and prevented me from going out so that I will not meet a people on another religion. They thought that this was their good religion. So when he entered the church, he looked at them and he liked what they, what they were doing. So he said, oh, this is much better than the religion my people worship. And he stayed with them until the sun set. So when he when he came back home, he uh, uh, his father said to him, "Where are you? Where were you?" He said, "I was at the church." So so uh, he said, "My father." I, I passed by people praying in the church and I liked what they were doing. I liked their religion. And I had been with them all day until sunset. He's, and the father said, oh boy, there, there is no, no khair in this religion. You have to be on the religion of your fathers. So he chained his son, he chained Salman in, uh, at home, and he would not allow him to go away. But before leaving the church, Salman told them, so where, where is the religion, the origin of this religion? What is the origin of this religion? So they said it's in Sham. So he came back and this was what happened. His father chained him. He did not want, want them, uh, want him to go anywhere. But he left a message for them that if anyone is going there, if any merchants are going, let me know. I want to go with them. And subhanAllah, 
a group was going. So they sent him a message or uh, someone to tell him that uh, the group is uh, going. So he ran away and he uh, went with them. So when he when he went when he arrived in Sham, he said, "Who is the most religious person here?" And they uh, showed him the bishop of the uh, church. So when he so when he when he went to him, he told him that I love this religion and I want to be with you to serve you in this church. So I would learn from you. The uh, bishop told him, yes, come in. But that person was very bad. He was ordering people to give charities, but he would keep this charity for, for himself. He would not give the poor. So Salman hated him. And that uh, bishop, after some time, he uh, passed away. So they assigned another, another person to take his place. But that person was way much better than uh, than that uh, bishop. So he loved him and he uh, stayed with him a long time. So until it was his death, so Salman asked him, who, who do you want me to go to? Who do you want me to follow? I don't know who, who, who is good, who is bad. And he said, there is one, a person in Al Musil in Al Iraq. So you go to him, he is on the right path. So when he died and uh, he was buried, uh, buried so uh, he went and traveled to Al Musil to meet that person. And he also found him a good person on the right path. And again, in, uh, after some time, he was dying. So he asked him, how and where would I go? And he told him, there is one person on in Nasibin and he is on the right path. So Salman traveled and went to Nasibin. And he also found him a good person until he it was his death time. So he asked him where to go, who is to trust? And he told him, "You, there is a person in Amuria and that is the Rome, Romans uh, land. So he went there and he stayed with him. He was also a good man. But on his deathbed, uh, he uh, asked him, tell me what to do, where to go. Because he liked the religion. He didn't want to go back to, to worshiping the uh, uh, fire, which he hated long time ago. So that person told him, it is now the time of a new prophet. And this new prophet is on the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam, on the same way that Ibrahim alayhi salam used to call people for. So uh, you will find him uh, in a place where there is uh, palm trees and he has uh, uh, some um, uh, characteristics, some qualities that you will not miss. He accepts gifts. He does not accept sadaqa, charity. And there is the seal of prophecy on his uh, between his shoulders. So if you can follow this person, you will be saved. He traveled to go to that place. But on the way, the person who, uh, uh, who uh, uh, was traveling with him, he uh, uh, got his um, money and his uh, uh, few uh, cows and he sold him to a person who lives in Medina. So as soon as he arrived in Medina, he loved the place because it's the place where there are palm trees. So he said, I hope 
This is the place of the new prophet. So he was uh, working for his master and, uh, until one day, the cousin of the master came and he was talking to him. And he said, they were talking to each other, uh, the cousins to each other. Um, so he said, so, um, he was cursing the people of Bani Qayla and because they, uh, they uh, are gathered uh, about, uh, they are gather, gathered around a person who came uh, from Mecca and he, uh, uh, he claims that he is a prophet. At that time, uh, Salman al-Farsi was, was up the uh, palm tree doing, uh, uh, getting some uh, dates. So he was about to fall down from the palm tree. So he went down immediately and he said, what, what did you say? So his master wa looked at him and he hit him. And he said, why, why are you asking? You have nothing to do with this. Why are you asking? Asking? So he said, nothing, nothing. I just heard something. And, and now uh, the, uh, your cousin just confirmed it. So he, this is what he answered him. And during the night, he collected his stuff. And he went to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Qiba. So he... Uh, he was so eager to see him. He wanted to, to make sure that he is the person. So he came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said to him, I heard that you are a righteous person. And I know that you have migrated and you have uh, people who are uh, poor and I have this uh, this thing uh, for sadaqah, for charity. So I, I would give it to you and not to anybody else. So he offered it to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to the companions. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the companions, take it, eat from it. But Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not eat from the, uh, whatever Salman gave them. So he said to himself, well, this is the first one. Now, then he said to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I collected my stuff and uh, I noticed that you do not uh, accept sadaqah, you do not eat from the sadaqah, but these things, the, this food is a gift to you. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ate from it and he gave some to his companions also. So again, he was so happy and he said, this is the second one. It came true. Then he uh, came once to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was in Baqi' al-Gharqad uh, following a janazah and uh, his uh, uh, companions were around him. So Salman wanted to see what is in between the shoulders of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So he went behind him. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam felt that and he put down his gown. He made his, the seal of prophecy shown and clear for Salman. So when Salman radiallahu anhu saw that, he said, I hugged him and I kissed him and I was crying and crying. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, come, come, come in front of me, sit in front of me. So he, Salman, told his story, the whole journey that he went through until he met Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and until he uh, accepted Islam and he was uh, sitting with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has guided Salman Radiallahu Anhu. 
So his his ending up in Al Medina Al Munawwara was not a co- coincidence. After all this long journey from one place to another place, from one travel to another travel, he was looking for the truth. He was looking for someone to tell him about Islam. He was looking for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam just to sh- to say to him, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna ka Muhammadur Rasulullah." Salman radiyallahu anhu, when he became a Muslim, he impressed Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the great knowledge he had. He traveled a lot, so he saw a lot, and he had a lot of experience. And also, he read a lot of books for Persians, Romans, Jewish, and he was known to be very smart, wise, and a very good person. So in Medina, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the brethrenship between the companions. And Sayyidina, Muhammad, uh, Sayyidina Salman was the brother of Sayyidina Abu Darda. MashaAllah. So both people are people of knowledge. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about Abu Darda, huwa hakim wa ummati. He is the wise person of my ummah. And of about Sayyidina Salman, he said, لَقَدْ أُشْبِعَ سَلْمَانُ عِلْمًا uh, Salman has a lot of knowledge. MashaAllah. So this is the uh, shahada, this is the uh, way that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to look at both of them. Now, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in uh, Medina. Uh, he built... Uh, uh, the masjid in Medina and uh, then after settling and uh, getting uh, stronger there were the battles uh, uh, started so there was the battle of Badr then the battle of Uhud during both Salman could not participate because he is still a slave you know that he was sold, he was sold to someone, and that person still owns him. So uh, one day he came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, told him, Katibiya Salman. He asked him to talk to his master and ask him how much does he need to pay for him so to, to, to set him free. And Salman, Salman said, I don't have anything. He said, don't worry about it. So he, he asked his master, what do you need so, to free me? And that person said, Three hundred palm trees. So to uh, 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 he he wanted small palm trees so that uh, he would grow them for him for, for him, and then they will grow later. So he would plant them. Salman would plant them for him and they will grow later. So he wanted 300 palm trees. And 40 uqiyya, uh, each five, five uqiyya is one kilogram, which is two pounds. So about 16, 16 uh, measure uh, to, to get him free. So what is the measure in gold? SubhanAllah. So... Uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said uh, he said to, to the companions help your brother help your brother so someone would come to Salman and give him 30 uh, sprouts of uh, uh, palm trees, small palm trees. And the other would come with uh, 20. Someone would come with 15. Someone would come with 10. Until he got all the 300 
300 uh, sprouts of the palm trees. So Sayyidina Muhammad told Salman, go prepare the, the land, uh, uh, dig the holes, but do not put anyone in the holes. When you are done uh, digging 300 holes, I will come myself. So Salman radiallahu anh, did, and he helped his uh, companions, his uh, 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 companions helped him. And until everything was ready, so he called Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who came and he planted all 300 uh, uh, palm trees. And until today, these 300 are the ajwa of Medina. So when we go to Medina and we buy this small black uh, um, dates, this is the ajwa of Medina that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa planted himself. So now he got the palm trees. What about the, uh, the gold? So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was once um, given an egg of gold, a small egg of gold. Uh, someone gave it to him. So he called Salman radiallahu anh, and he told him, take this and pay your ransom of the uh, money. And he did. And Sayyidina Salman radiallahu anh, was freed. He is not a slave anymore. Short time passed and there was the battle of the trench. And it was the first battle that Sayyidina Salman would participate with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that was during the uh, fifth year of the Hijrah. SubhanAllah. So, uh, the Muslims, uh, um, uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ got the information that Quraysh united with Ghatafan and other tribes, and they wanted to come and kill the Muslims and to uh, destroy them. They were about 10,000 soldiers, the non-Muslims. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, um, he, he uh, uh, talked to all his companions and he told them what's going on. So Sayyidina Salman said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, inna kunna bifarisin idha husirna khandaqna alayna. In Persia, if we were surrounded we would dig a trench around us. So this is what, uh, what we used to do. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam liked that idea. And he uh, thought that this is an amazing plan. So he ordered the uh, uh, companions to start digging and uh, so, uh, they uh, uh, that, uh, they had the uh, uh, trench from the uh, north side of Medina because there were all um, uh, gardens and uh, 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 orchards uh, and the other side. So that was the only place that they would attack them from. So they were all working, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu divided the, the uh, amount uh, of uh, digging, how much each person would get. He grouped the Muslims into uh, several groups and each group had to dig some, uh, uh, a few meters uh, uh, down and around the uh, place. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu used to say, 
used to make dua for for the Muslims, for the companions, and he would say, "Allahumma inna al-'aisha aishu al-akhirah, faghfir lil-ansari wal-muhajira." The uh, oh Allah, uh, the real life is the li- uh, the life after. Ya Allah, I ask you for forgiveness for those for al-ansar who uh, uh, helped those who migrated from Mecca. So al-ansar, the people of Medina, and al-muhajira, the people of Mecca who came with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who migrated to Medina. So they were eager to work harder when they heard the dua of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they were working so hard with with help happiness and they would answer نَحْنُ الَّذِينَ بَايَعُوا مُحَمَّدًا عَلَى الْجِهَادِ مَا بَقِيْنَا أَبَدًا We are the one who gave pledge to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we will fight, fight with him as long as we live. Salman was a very strong man. He worked what equals 10 of other companions. He was very strong. He was a very uh, well-built man. So uh the the uh, muhajireen the people of medina would say salmanu minna salman is from us and the people of mecca they would say no salman is from us so sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to listen to them and he heard what they were arguing about so he uh, gave the uh, last word and he said salmanu minna al albayt Salman is from us, the people of uh, the, the house. So he, he was given the honor to be from the family of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, uh, they were uh, working hard. Then there was a big, big uh, um, uh, rock that could not uh, be removed by Salman and Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw how hard it was for him to do, to dig it. So he came, he took the shovel from, say, uh, from Sayyidina Salman and he uh, hit the, the uh, uh, rock and there was a flash of light. Then he hit it another time, there was another flash of light. Then he hit it a third, uh, a third time, and there was another flash of light. So Sayyidina Salman said to him, Bi abi anta wa ummi ya Rasulullah, may my father and mother be ransomed for you ya Rasulullah. Ma hadha alladhi ra'aytu, lama'a tahta al-mi'awal wa anta tadrib. What is this flashlight that happened that I just saw? And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, did you see that? Really? Did you see that? He said, yes. So Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the first hit, uh, there was a flash, uh, there was light that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala showed me that Yemen is to be conquered by Muslims. The second one is Sham and Morocco will be conquered by Muslim. The third one, the Far East uh, countries will be conquered by Muslim, which means that Islam will spread all over, east to west. So this was uh, how Sayyidina Salman worked with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the trench. And uh, when uh, when uh, um, the, the, the whole work was done in six days, and when uh, they, uh, when the uh, non-Muslims arrived into the place and they found the trench, they said, oh, this is something that the Arabs would not know. We don't know this. And they were told that there is a Persian uh, uh, person uh, amongst the Muslims and he told them what to do. So for Salman was not just a Persian person. Salman was a person of the house of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now the battle ended. The, uh, uh, the trench was uh, one of the big factors of the victory of the Muslims. And Sayyidina Salman thanked Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for that. He thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gave him uh, the courage to say the idea to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there is a big important lesson here. When you do something that 
it's it becomes so successful, so good, so so much, so many benefits out of it. Then thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that He provided you with the means to do so. It's the blessings that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given to you so that you are successful. So when you thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He will increase you. Subhanallah. And there are so many forms of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, inshallah, one day we will talk about these forms. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to hear the voice of his righteous people. So when we say, alhamdulillah, Allah likes to hear that. So he would increase. He said it. He promised in the Quran. If you thank me, then I will increase you. So this is what happened. Uh, there are also some other points about Sayyidina Salman, but I think uh, we are a little bit over time. So inshallah, uh, I would like to end with one thing that when uh, Salman radiallahu anhu was, about, was sick on his deathbed, he cried. And he, the companions were around him and they asked him, well, why are you crying? He said, I'm not afraid of death. And I don't want to live anymore. ولكن إنما أبكي لأمر عاهده إلينا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أخشى أن لا نكون حفظنا وصية نبينا but I'm crying that Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم asked us for something uh, uh, ordered us to do something but I'm afraid that we lost this thing we did not fulfill this promise so he said to us ليكم بلاغ أحدكم من الدنيا كزاد الراكب so let the what what a person owns in this dunya be what someone who is traveling can hold with him. So let's think for a minute now. If we open our door ups and, and we look at how many clothes we have, how many shoes we have, how many scarves we have, how many suits we have, let's think again and try to, to, to donate what we don't want, try to give people and remember that when you give, Allah yuhibbu al-tayyib. Don't give the, the torn one or the uh, uh, wrath one. Just give something good for the sake of Allah. And remember that he will save it for you in the day after. So he, uh, uh, Sayyidina Salman looked at his wife and he said, what have you done with the misk that we brought? with the oud, with the perfume, with the bakhur that we brought. So she said, here it is. So he said, put it in water and spray it, spray it around me. فَإِنَّ الْآنَ يَأْتِينَا قَوْمٌ لَيْسُوا بِإِنْسٍ وَلَا جِنْ Now I am being visited by some, some uh, people, some, someone, by some spirits who are not humans, who are not jinn. So... Another thing that we need to, to pay attention when we have someone, when we, we know that someone is dying, we need to, to make uh, utter in the, in, the, in the room because the angels are coming. We want it to be pleasant for them. And uh, also one important thing to do is try to get a few drops of water on the lips of the person who is dying because at that moment, shaitan will have a drink of water and he will say, uh, just say, uh, just don't believe in Allah and I will give you this water to drink. 
the man, the, uh, the person who is dying would be thirsty, and that's why they put drops of water in his in his mouth. So uh, that is why we make the dua, Allahumma. إِنَّا نَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الْمَحْيَةِ وَالْمَمَاتِ فِتْنَةُ الْمَمَاتِ is the, uh, uh, we seek refuge in you, Ya Allah, uh, from the uh, fitna of death. This is what shaitan wants. Even at the very last breath of our life, he wants, he will not get dispersed. He wants to get to the people away from the, the, the right path. He wants to get to the people to be non-believers even when they are, when they are dying. So this was the story of Sayyidina Salman radiallahu an. Uh, so just uh, a very interesting, very amazing story. There is nothing in coincidence when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do something, then it will happen and it's all predestined. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته